Pe Marcia Joyner, and we are navigating the journey. And my goodness, today's journey. Let me tell you right up front, because everybody in the whole world is on the internet today. If it's not, if it doesn't look like we wanted it to look like, just bear with us because you know that they're teaching online and the children are online with games and toys and whatnot. So just stay with us. Now, my guest is a dear friend, and we all know about me and dear friends. I only talk to dear friends. This is, today is Martha, Martha Copeland. And yes, I am the S and she's the T. And the S and the T are, the S is for short. Marcia, and the T is tall, Martha. You got that. Okay. <laughs> but as we said, today is urgent. Today, unlike any other day in our history, is urgent. Because Hawaii is a prepaid health care state. And for all of those people who were working with firms and companies that ended business last month, month of February and March. For all of those people, they're out of business and they are out of health care as of yesterday. So I've asked Martha, who is a genius when it comes to Medicare and Medicaid and all those kind of wonderful things, if Martha would guide us through this maze, and it is a maze, of what to do, how to do, and especially, I know most of us don't even think about it, and the people that lost it didn't think about it, but if your grandma, or anybody for that matter, had prepaid health care, and they're getting prescription drugs every month, think about what is going to happen to them as of today, the first if they don't have a prepaid medical plan. So Martha, again, is the genius. So it was Martha that I went to, and Martha showed me the letters and the people that are upset. And I cried, honestly, just reading and, and feeling what these people must be going through. So Martha, I'm here. Okay. Hello, hello, Thank you so much for taking the time to be with us and explain to us exactly what happened, what is happening, and where they can, where do we go from here? Okay. Well, thank, thank you, Marcia. You. I just want to thank you so much. I pray that you and your family are doing well and uh, our community is taking care of each other. But I want to thank you so much for inviting me to be a guest on today's show. Because my purpose today is to share resources for Hawaii's furloughed workers who may need to replace their health coverage. You, when you think about it, if you're told that you are being furloughed or laid off and you won't have a job, probably the last thing you're thinking about is that you'll lose your insurance. But Hawaii's laid off workers are losing health insurance and they need help right now. As of today, I understand that it's close to 97,000 workers who have filed for unemployment. Many oh of them, yes, many of them are going to need affordable coverage options to avoid insurance gaps and costly medical bills. And like you said, Marcia, many people delayed retirement at 65. They're working beyond that age, so they have their employer coverage. If they lose that employer coverage, now they have to figure out how to get Medicare insurance, and it's not an overnight thing. So it can take 
a month or two months to get Medicare when you are over 65 and you've lost your job. So I've been hearing from 20, 30 people a day, Marsha. <laughs> and um, what I'm hearing is while our unions are working hard to maintain insurance benefits for their workers, many non-union, single parent households, working parents, the working aged, young adults, and teens in Hawaii have lost jobs and already have or may suffer the double blow of the loss of their health and co uh, coverage. So again, over the last, just the last 72 hours, I have assisted about 60 people, uh, you know, and, and when you say, you know, you, you just cry over it, believe me, I've been crying because there was one person and they're losing their coverage. They lost it yesterday and I called Social Security Administration with them and Social Security had to say, I'm so sorry, but in order to get your Medicare Part D to start as early as April 1st, which is today, we needed to have some signed forms from you in the month of March. So I said, this is dire needs, you know, is it anything that can be done? And the Social Security representative said to the gentleman, you know, I'm so sorry, I can send you the forms. And if you get them into us this month, we will really work hard and get your Medicare set up for, for May 1st. So this gentleman will not have coverage in the month of April. This is what's going on. You know, so, and many Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so I'm I'm concerned about the uh, anybody like this gentleman, but let's assume that his somebody in his family needs uh, medication for uh, high blood pressure or diabetes or health care, I mean heart. Right. And they've been getting it from Long's or Walgreens and now that automatic payment has stopped. What happens? What, well, what happens to them? Well, I pray that the person has maybe a 90 day supply to get them through, but if that person were to run out of medication this month and now they don't have insurance to be able to go to the doctor and have the doctor order a refill, that person would actually be without coverage. And you know what can happen if you're not keeping your blood pressure under control, if you're not keeping your glucose under control, it can be very, very dangerous. So this is very, very important that we help people understand how to get insurance if they have lost it as a result of these furloughs. And I'm hearing some people, they know that their jobs won't be returning. Um, they've been just terminated. And I want to mention, Marsha, a few of the people have limited English proficiency. So they are oh, at a oh, loss of how oh, to yes. out this whole healthcare thing. And when they find out, you know, some of them called me on a Saturday, they said, I opened the mail, I found out that my insurance was ending March 31st and I have no idea what to do, who to call, nothing. And with the mandatory, think about it, Marshall, with the mandatory shutdown of, of all of these local businesses, the usual resources are just unavailable. You know, that's what's left so many workers in limbo. If you call your former employer, well, they're all stay at home, so you cannot reach them at the normal numbers. So those calls go unanswered. Then the in-person appointments at social agencies, local government offices have also been discontinued until further notice. So a lot of uh, folks are pushing people to the internet, but I'm talking about people, you know, again, limited English proficiency and they just don't have computers, even the smartphone. They don't know how to navigate the, the website in order to apply for programs that might be available to them. Some, Marsha, I have to tell you, they have even told me that they are thinking of risking going without coverage with the hope that they will be called back to work by May 1st. And for some of these individuals, as you mentioned, Marsha, with chronic conditions, a month without health insurance. That's too much. It, that's it's too much. a yeah. poor health outcome. So if they need these refills and things and they no longer have coverage and the doctor can't see them without coverage, um, that's a problem that's brewing. So what I've done, I have uh, put some slides together. Uh, I don't know if you can, can you bring those slides up, 
I know you're having some I internet hope, issues. <laughs> I, hope, I hope we can. Yes. So what I did in the first slide is I just have just a picture of all of our little businesses, you know, the movie theater, um, you know, the, 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 the pet shop, the place where you take your pet for supplies or the, the, the doggy daycare. All of these places are, you know, not allowed. If they're not essential, they're not allowed to have their employees uh, show up at work. So we have all of these small businesses that are, have been impacted. And if there's no one coming in, of course, um, they may have to furlough or lay off a worker, and that can mean that their health insurance goes away. So I wanted to take a look at how many people in our community might get impacted. So on my next slide, uh, Marsha, and I think you, you gave me some information on this too, but on our next slide, this goes back to uh, something that was done in 2016. There were 126,000 people employed by small businesses. A hundred and yep. yeah. A hundred and twenty six thousand. So with the numbers I hear are that to date ninety seven thousand have applied for unemployment. So it sounds right. You know, we probably have many more people than this hundred twenty six thousand, but if we're at ninety seven thousand who've applied for unemployment we, we, we're going to have an issue here if people do not know how to access their insurance. Does that make sense? It, well, and yes, because of the 97,000, there are still some people who may or may not qualify for unemployment. Uh, if you own a business like, like the person that does my nails, I haven't seen her in six weeks, I guess, because of you know, she is has a salon, but it's in a larger building, and the building is shut down. So well, she has no choice, you know. Right, that's right. right. Well, it's interesting. I don't have that information today, but I have been listening to reports from the government's office, the lieutenant governor, uh, Ed Case, um, uh, Brian Schatz, and they have put together some programs that they, they mentioned may help people who are the gig workers and, you know, salon owners. So um, hopefully people are able to access that information and someone like the person who takes care of you at the salon, uh, maybe there is something available that normally wouldn't be available, but I understand they're being very, very flexible uh, because they recognize that these people need income in order to pay their bills. So if, you know, you cannot go and see your salon person how will she pay her bills? Right. Oh, that's interesting. That is very interesting. And but when we think about those people, what about a landlord? Let's assume that you have a house, a large house, and you have rumors, people that, you know, pay you monthly as a rumor. What about the landlord who now is not getting that income from those people that live in that house. Let's assume there's eight or ten people in in this large house, and they are laid off. Now that landlord does not get that income, and the landlord still has to pay the mortgage uh, on the house. So what and, happens to the, the landlord is what, where I'm going with that. Well, exactly. So again, what I've been seeing on the websites uh, from the gover governor's office and the congressman um, and the lieutenant governor and even the local news stations, that's my point about wanting to talk about these furloughed employees. It seems like there's plenty of information about, you know, wash your hands for 20 seconds and, uh, and, uh, and, 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 you know, shop certain hours if you're in a certain age group and grabbing gold meals for the keiki and, and Malama meals is reporting that they're delivered 25,000 meals to the, to the elderly and the Small Business Administration supposedly has a program for uh, people who uh, rent renters and people who own property and rent to others. But who's taking care of the people who may have lost jobs and as a result have lost the insurance? Now the union folks, I know that the union leaders 
are really working hard to take care of their folks. But what about people who don't belong to unions? Like you said, what about the person at your salon? You know, she may be a business owner, but now if she cannot keep up with her insurance, then what what are her options? Or she has employees that had coverage through the company. So yeah. I wanted to talk about COBRA. And I think I have a slide up uh, first that shows health insurance. <laughs> so just a slide that kind of shows, yeah, when you have health insurance, you can see a doctor, you can take medication, uh, you can have tests run. Uh, if you think you have respiratory illness, you definitely need to be able to uh, reach a doctor, but you need, need to keep that health insurance going. So on the slide after that, I show COBRA is expensive. Now COBRA is What is that, COBRA? What right. is that? Yeah, COBRA is generally offered uh, by companies with at least 20 or more employees. Um, and so that allows your insurance to continue for yourself or yourself and your family if you have a separation from employment that you no longer have insurance. But Marsha, take a look at the average annual premium for a single person in 2019 was $7,188 for the year or $599 per month. $600 oh, a month for a single person and $1,715 for a family. And this report was done by the Kaiser Family Foundation, and they are very good with, with uh, doing these reports. And they, these are 2019 figures. So if our folks are, you know, I mean, people can say, oh, you know, the company will send them a letter and tell them how to access their health insurance. But can you imagine after being told that you no longer have a job and, uh, and your insurance just went away and you find out to keep your insurance going? is $600 per month if you're an individual and $1,700 for a family? Oh, exactly. and, and you don't have a job. And you don't have a job. So that's why I'm so thankful that you allowed me to come on to talk about this. Now, what I've been doing, I, I you know, I talked to a lot of people. So I said, I say to people, so what are you going to do? So they said, well, we don't know what to do, Martha. You know, so I said, well, you've heard about the Affordable Care Act plans, and these are great plans for folks in this situation because they can cost under one hundred dollars a month for some individuals and families. You know, if based on their income and other eligibility, and they are offered by our two largest health plans. So these are health plans that people will know about. However, wait times to get to the healthcare.gov site are quite lengthy. So most people give up after, you know, an hour. They, they don't hear anything, you know, just wait. They just hang up the phone. And then when you call the largest insurance, sure, they can give you the same rate that align with the COBRA, but those reps are not allowed to give you the rates that can get to under 100 if you qualify because they're not allowed to help with those. You have to go to healthcare.gov and do it through a website to be able to pick up the, the subsidies or the credit to make that insurance lower. Does that make sense? So, yes, it does. And so you're going to tell us how to do that, right? Right, right. sure. I'm okay. going to try to do that in, with the few minutes I have left. But I wanted to also mention that a lot of people are being told that Medicaid, you know, is available. You can go online, apply for Medicaid. But what people need to know is you still need to meet requirements for Medicaid, so it's not like I lost my job, I automatically qualify for Medicaid. You still have to go through the application process. So if you lost your job in the month of March you do, and you do not have coverage from an employer, then April 1st, if you're applying for state Medicaid, even if you qualify, it doesn't become available the next day. There is a process. So that's what people need to uh, really be aware of. Also. I think because, Marsha, you know, when most people are working, you know, they get their insurance through work. If they change jobs, they get another insurance through work. They never have to really go out on their own to try to secure health care insurance. So I think that's why there's a disconnect and people don't really know who to call and what to do. And as a result of this, I believe that the people who've been laid off, and remember my number, 97,000. Now, we don't know how many are union workers, but even if we just take 10 or 20,000 of that number, 
if they do not have coverage, they're going to end up in our emergency rooms, and our emergency rooms are going to get stuck with uncovered bills, bills that yes. people can pay, and we will so, And that's terribly more, expensive. Right, em- more emergency than emergency rooms. Yeah. Right, and then I'm already hearing, Marsha, that our Medicaid population, which is currently over 300,000, we know that we're going to find more and more people on the Medicaid rolls. But if we can help them understand how to get the Affordable Care Act, that would be, in my opinion, so, very, very important. Okay, so now you tell us exactly how to reach you and how to call you and uh, how you can get them connected to where they yep. need to be. Yep. First, uh, around slide number seven, I have the healthcare.gov site that people can go to, but it is can be a little bit uh, difficult to navigate. So I have a site, uh, it's get2insurance.com, get the number two insurance.com, and I have a, a screenshot of it um, where you can actually go to my site and at least you can call if you have a problem getting through. So if you go to my site, you can hit individual and family health insurance, get a quote. So very simple, individual and family health insurance, get a quote. And then the next page that you should see <laughs> is um, the same site. I have a direct connection to the uh, healthcare.gov Affordable Care Act plan. So you can just fill out, all you got to fill out is really, really simple. Um, just fill out um, the information there. You can fill out your zip code. You can fill out um, just your zip code and hit see plans and prices. Then you can see what the plans and pricing might be in your area. Then you just fill out your name, um, who wants insurance, the age of that person, and what your income is, and a quote will pop up. And then again, if a person needs assistance, uh, I can certainly. So you read that, you can talk to them because that would make, you know, even for me, and I don't mind filling in our forms online, but I even feel better when I talk to somebody on the other end. So again, you look, like I told everybody, you are the genius, the Medicare genius. Oh, so so kind. But this is not <laughs> just for Medicare, but that's what's really unique about what I can do. I can speak to the Affordable Care Act plans. I've been doing that for over seven years, and that's for people less than 65. But if someone in the household is over 65 and also just lost their coverage, I can help them as well. So I can help with you know, insurance, you know, from folks from our, you know, our newborns, you know, all the way to our Medicare beneficiaries. So in a time like this, everybody needs to make sure their insurance is intact. And that's what I want to help people with. And, uh, you know, all they got to do is call me. So I have a toll-free number set up just for this. So if I'm on the phone, um, they can leave a message or my live person will answer. But it's one 800 Two two six three six six zero. That's one eight hundred two two six three six six zero. And I'm really hoping, Marsha, that you can, you know, get the word out to people that I'm really here to help. I love my community. I love what I do. I want everybody to be safe. And the way that this program that I have access to, there's no face-to-face needed. I can help people over the phone. But I definitely, uh, I've helped already sixty people. And they all say, Martha, thank you, because I was completely lost. And I would, this one person, she was on hold, and she had been on hold for two hours, and her husband called me. <laughs> and then I was able to, you know, nav- help them navigate and get taken care of in 20 minutes. So she just well, laughed that she still yeah. never got the person on the phone. <laughs> so I want to just thank you. I wanted to just say that real quick. But thank you, Marsha, uh, for well, allowing me to be on the show today. Now, after I read that letter, I just cried, and I thought, what can we do? And so that's why I asked you if you would be so kind as, even though you are in Kauai, you are quarantined in Kauai. Yes, (laughs) ma'am. You know, of course, that's the Garden of Eden, so if you must be quarantined, why not Kauai? Right. (laughs) Well, Martha, again, thank you. So much for spending this time with me and with us and for anybody that's watching and if you think you need just send the link to anybody that you think needs help just down at the bottom here there is a link and it says 
uh, to share and just send it to anyone you know that you think might need Martha's help. Thank you again, Martha. It's been a pleasure, and we'll see you next time. Aloha.